today the topic is overview of chemical reaction engineering so the new subject chemical reaction engineering in that we are starting the introduction of chemical reaction engineering every industrial chemical process is designed to produce economically a desired product so from a variety of starting materials through a succession of treatment steps so for that we describe the process in a figure so here is the typical chemical process so physical treatment steps chemical treatment steps again physical treatment steps so the raw materials enter into the physical treatment steps then chemical treatment steps and then it again undergoes physical treatment steps and it releases the products so here we go the details of the process the raw materials undergo a number of physical treatment steps to put them in the form in which they can be reacted chemically so from physical treatment steps it will be converted into chemical treatment steps then they pass through the reactor and then the products of the reaction must undergo further physical treatment that is separations purifications etc for the final desired product to be obtained so here we can see from the physical treatment steps it will be converted for chemical reaction and then the products will come out by undergoing physical treatment steps again it will be undergoing many of the physical treatment steps for final desired product so here the design of equipment for physical treatment steps is studied in unit operations in this the chemical treatment process is the heart of the process which makes or breaks the process economical so here we have to design the reactor so the reactor design uses information knowledge and experience from different areas so we use thermodynamics fluid mechanics heat transfer mass transfer and economics for reactor design so chemical reaction engineering is the synthesis of all these factors with the aim of properly designing a chemical reactor so to find what a reactor is able to do we need to know the kinetics the contacting pattern and the performance equation so for any reactor output is a function of input kinetics and contacting pattern so this equation is known as performance equation so by using this expression we can find which is best design and then from that design we can scale up to larger units so here we can see how the performance equation is written from the diagram so consider a reactor for which we are giving the input and after going into the reactor we get the output so this relates the performance equation relates the input to output so for this the contacting pattern and the kinetics are also one of the factors for the reactor design so first thing is contacting pattern what it means it means how materials flow through and contact each other in the reactor how early or late they mix or their clumpiness or state of aggregation so by their very nature some materials are very clumpy that means the solids and non coalescing liquid droplets so how the materials that means the reactants will flow and contact and how they will mix and how the state of aggregation will be that is called contacting pattern then kinetics kinetics means how fast the things will happen so if it is very fast then the equilibrium tells what will leave the reactor if it is not fast then the 
rate of chemical reaction and also heat and mass transfer will determine what will happen in the reactor. That is the kinetics of the reactor. So then we have classification of reactions. So what are the different reactions we have? It's based on the number and types of phases involved. So it is divided into homogeneous and heterogeneous systems. Homogeneous. A reaction is homogeneous if it takes place in one phase alone. So if it happens in one phase, then it is homogeneous reaction. Then hetero <coughs> heterogeneous. So a reaction is heterogeneous if it requires the presence of at least two phases to proceed at the rate that it does. So a reaction can be considered as heterogeneous if it has at least two phases and more than two phases also. So these chemical reactions can be classified in another way also. That is catalytic and non-catalytic reactions. So first one is catalytic reaction. Catalytic reaction is whose rate is altered by materials that are neither reactants nor products. So that materials are called catalysts which either hinder or accelerate the reaction process. So that means we will be adding a, pro adding a material which is called catalyst. That catalyst will either help to faster the reaction, hinder faster the reaction or slow down the reaction. So that is the catalyst. So based on that we call it as catalytic reaction. The second one is non-catalytic reaction. Those are chemical reactions in which a catalyst does not involve in the reaction process. So here we can classify the reactions as homogeneous, heterogeneous and also non-catalytic and catalytic. So in homogeneous reactions we see most gas phase reactions are non-catalytic, most liquid phase reactions are catalytic. Similarly, fast reactions such as burning of flame are non-catalytic and reactions in colloidal systems, enzyme and microbial reactions are mostly catalytic. Similarly, in heterogeneous systems, burning of coal, gas liquid absorption with reaction, roasting of ores, these are some of the non-catalytic reactions under heterogeneous system. Similarly, ammonia synthesis, cracking of crude oil, oxidation of ammonia to produce nitric acid or some of the examples of catalytic reactions under heterogeneous systems. Then we see the variables affecting the rate of reaction. So what are the different variables that will affect the rate of reaction? So many variables may affect the rate of a chemical reaction. In homogeneous systems, temperature, pressure and composition are variables. In heterogeneous systems, more than one phase is involved, so the problem becomes more complex. So heat and mass transfer play important roles in determining the rates of heterogeneous reactions. Then we consider the main thing that is the definition of reaction rate. Reaction rate is the measure of change in concentration of disappearance of reactants or the change in concentration of appearance of products per unit time. That means we can, if you consider a reaction, the measure of change in disappearance of reactants that is a measure of change in concentration of disappearance of reactants or the change in concentration of appearance of products per unit time is taken as reaction rate so if you consider one reaction component and define the rate in terms of that component i so if the rate of change in number of moles of this component due to reaction is d n i by d t then the rate of reaction in various forms can be defined as follows so first we consider 
based on unit volume of reacting fluid so the rate of reaction is written as ri which is equal to 1 by v dn by dt so dn by dt is rate of change in number of moles due to reaction so which is equal to moles of i formed by volume of fluid into time so this is for unit volume of reacting fluid we can write the rate of reaction or i similarly based on unit mass of solid in fluid solid systems rate of reaction is equal to 1 by w dni by dt so dni by dt is almost same just the other thing will be changed that is a 1 by v or 1 by w like that so moles of i formed by mass of solid into time similarly based on unit interfacial surface in two fluid systems or based on unit surface of solid in gas solid systems or i is equal to 1 by s into dni by dt that is moles of i formed by surface into time so similarly the next one is based on unit volume of solid in gas solid systems the rate of reaction is 1 by vs dni by dt that is moles of i formed by volume of solid into time on unit volume of reactor the rate of reaction is 1 by vr into dni by dt which is equal to moles of i formed by volume of reactor into time so these are the different forms of rate of reaction based on different conditions so the reactors will come in different color shapes and sizes and are used for all sorts of reactions so reactions are so different in rates and types so each reactor requires developing the appropriate set of performance equations so for each reactor we have to develop performance equations based on the different conditions so this is the today's topic that is the introduction of chemical reaction engineering so if you like my video please subscribe my channel please like share and comment my videos thank you very much